In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my heart. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be comforted. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek. to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. And to his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his hand. He will lift me high upon the rock. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday in Lent is written in the 21st chapter of the book of Numbers. From Mount Or, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, and the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many of the people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. 
for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading, the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, the second chapter. You were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, and whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people loved the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been carried out in God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our confession of faith is the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not being, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men 
and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and he was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and he was crucified also for us in the conscious fire. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have to end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. In the name of Jesus, amen. Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Jesus here is foreshadowing his own cross, his suffering and death upon the cross, literally lifted up off of the earth, onto the cross, displayed for the people to see. When this happens, uh, this is essentially Jesus warning his disciples or preparing his disciples uh, to understand this. Uh, that when it does happen, they may remember these words that Jesus has spoken uh, and realize that not only that it must take place in this way, but that it helps them understand why. It helps them understand the meaning and the purpose of the cross. 
Because for us as Christians, that's sometimes a difficult thing, and it happens to be one of the more common uh, questions or really criticisms or accusations uh, from those outside the Christian church. Why is it that we worship uh, a condemned criminal? Why is it that this, this most brutal and torturous form of death is not just acknowledged by the church, but celebrated, lifted up, held up for the church to see? We have the image of Jesus on the cross, on the altar for all to see. Why would we remember such a painful and terrible thing? Well, the Old Testament reading, uh, the example of uh, what Moses did for the people in the Old Testament, uh, gives us a clue and prepares us, helps us to understand what it is that Jesus is accomplishing by his suffering and death. We did hear this reading earlier from the book of Numbers, chapter 21. And it was prompted by the sin of the people. The people complaining uh, against God, not simply crying out to God because they are hungry and because they are thirsty and because they are uh, miserable in the wilderness, but Notice the accusations, really the accusations that God is not good, the accusations that God is not taking care of them, the accusations that God brought them, freed them from slavery in Egypt just to let them die in the wilderness. They complain that there is uh, no food and no water. Then they say, we loathe this worthless food which requires a little bit of context also, because the truth is God was providing for his people. God did provide bread in the wilderness for his people to eat. The first time that the Israelites cried out because they were hungry, God fed them. Indeed, God gave them bread every day. They called it manna. God provided bread for them to eat every day. When no other food could be found in the wilderness, God provided for his people. And yet, of course, you know human nature. Even if you are providing food for people to eat, if it's the same meal over and over and over again, we're going to get sick of it and complain and say that we want something different which is precisely what the Israelites do. And so as punishment from God in response to this lack of faith and complaining against God, here come fiery serpents, venomous snakes, to bite the people and many of the people die in the wilderness. Now, the people recognize their sin and they do what's right. They recognize their sin against the Lord. They confess their sin to God and they ask Moses uh, to pray to God on their behalf. As they are repenting their sins, pray to God to take away the serpents from us. We have learned our lesson. We will no longer complain against the Lord. Take away the serpents. But here's the fascinating thing that happens. The Lord does not take away the serpents. We, this would be the simple solution, right? Just take them away. Take away the snakes. Problem solved. But this is not what God does. The serpents remain. They continue to bite the people. The threat of death is still there. And the reminder of the sin of the people is still there. However, God does provide salvation for his people. He tells Moses to make a serpent out of bronze, set it high on a pole where everybody can see it. And if a serpent bit anyone, he could look at the bronze serpent and live. Right. Now, what's the medicinal value of looking at a bronze serpent? Well, nothing. 
nothing but the word and the promise of God. It wasn't the the bronze that, that Moses fashioned and put on a pole. It was the word and the promise of God attached to it. So God does not take away the serpents. The, their, their sin, their, the, the judgment remains. The consequence of sin remains. And yet God provides salvation for his people. Now, again, all of this is foreshadowing. All of this is prophecy. All of this is meant to teach us uh, about the crucifixion of Jesus and the purpose of that crucifixion. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Why is Jesus crucified? Because of the sin of the world. Because of the sins of men. Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. The judgment of God against the sins of the world is death. We have sinned and all all die. And like the Israelites of old, when we recognize our sins, when we recognize how God uh, punishes us for our sins, we cry out to the Lord for mercy. We cry out to the Lord in repentance. We acknowledge our sins before the Lord and we seek his forgiveness. And we ask... Right? This, is, this is where our thinking or our, our assumptions, our desires come into play. Right? We ask God, take away the serpents. Take away pain, take away suffering, take away death. Right? Just take it away. Like the Israelites of old asked God to just take away the serpents, we ask God to just take away anything that would remind us of our sin or anything that would be a consequence of our sin. But he doesn't. He doesn't. Pain and suffering remain. The consequences of our sin remain. But what does God do for his people? He sends Jesus to suffer and die upon the cross. Jesus is lifted up on the cross with the, pro- with, with the promise of God that anyone who looks to him meaning anyone who believes in him, anyone who trusts in him, anyone who looks to him in faith will be forgiven, will be saved from death. Meaning even after the life of this world has ended, we still have the promise of the resurrection and the life everlasting because Jesus has forgiven the sins of the people. And so, what does Moses tell the Israelites of old? Look to the serpent and hear the word and the promise of God that you will not die. When Jesus is lifted up on the cross, we hear the word and the promise of God. Look to him. Believe in him. Trust in him. And you will live forever in the kingdom of God. That whoever believes in him may have eternal life. And it's immediately after this that we get uh, John 3.16, which is uh, so well known uh, in the Christian church as the, the, the great summary of the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The consequence of our sin, the punishment for our sin is death and hell. But God in his mercy, God in his love for us and for all the universe has sent his son into the world to take upon himself the punishment for our sins that we might not die but live that we might not perish forever in hell, but might have the eternal life of heaven. And we look to Jesus, we look to the cross. 
And so it is for this reason that the cross, and specifically the image of Jesus on the cross, is the great symbol of the Christian faith. It is lifted up upon the altar for us to see every time we come into the house of God. It is lifted up on the highest point of the church building, the the golden cross, that can be seen from miles around. So we are always reminded, whenever we see the cross, we are reminded of Jesus and his suffering for us. Whenever we see the cross, we are reminded of God's love for his people. Whenever we see the cross, we are reminded of sin and death, but more importantly about forgiveness and life that God has provided for his people. When we see the cross, we think of Jesus lifted up to atone for the sins of the world. When we see the cross, we are saved. May God grant this unto us all. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of people to faith, let us pray to the Lord. For our pastors and missionaries, for the leaders of our church, for all those who faithfully proclaim the word of God, and for all those who suffer for bearing the name of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For our schools, for teachers and students and all those who support them, for learning and growth in body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our families, for husbands and wives, parents and children, serving one another in love and faithfulness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our country, for our cities and communities, for peace, for justice, for prosperity, let us pray to the Lord. For our elected officials and all those in authority over us. For those who serve in law enforcement and in our armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For seasonable weather to bring forth the fruitfulness of the earth. For wisdom and generosity in managing the blessings the Lord has entrusted to us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all people who labor in their God-given vocations especially for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for protection of all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all those in need, for those afflicted by war and violence, for the hungry and homeless, for the lonely and despairing, for widows and orphans, and for those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the sick and the hospitalized, for those who are near death, and for doctors and nurses and caretakers who give aid and comfort to those in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the family of Mason Kinney, who has been called to rest, that his family would be comforted with the promise of the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all those who are absent from us, for those for whom our prayers have been asked, And for all those who are on our hearts and minds this day, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty and everlasting God, for our many sins, we justly deserve eternal condemnation. In your mercy, you sent your dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who won for us forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. Grant us true repentance, that we may ever be dead to sin and raised up by your life-giving forgiveness. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may be ever watchful and live true and godly lives in your service. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, We laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O God, the Father, fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace.
Once again, good evening. Uh, welcome to, uh, to all of you this evening. Uh, please do take a look at the bulletin and the announcements uh, that are in there. Um, we continue in the season of Lent, and so the, uh, the Wednesday evening uh, services continue uh, two more uh, Wednesday nights. Um, if you're looking forward uh, to Holy Week, um, Holy Week begins with uh, Palms. Uh, when, when you come, if you come here uh, next, the next Saturday service on Saturday uh, the 23rd, that will be Palm Sunday uh, weekend. And so we will have the Palm Sunday service here um, Saturday and Sunday. That Sunday, uh, the 24th, uh, also being uh, the day of confirmation. And we have four uh, eighth graders being confirmed uh, this year. Uh, Monday, Thursday service, Good Friday, uh, and then Easter Sunday, March 31st, uh, 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. So that's a few weeks away, um, but please do mark your calendar for that. Um, thank you to everyone who was here uh, for our fish fry uh, yesterday. Uh, we had a very large crowd of people going through pretty consistently all night. Um, so uh, thank you to everyone who came to eat, uh, especially those who were here to, uh, to cook, to serve, to set up, to clean up, uh, all of those things that, uh, that, that need to happen to make the, make the night a success. Um, there are a couple of opportunities tomorrow uh, for, for lunchtime to support our sister congregations. Uh, Trinity Lutheran Church in Millstadt is having a spaghetti dinner. Uh, St. John Lutheran Church in Baldwin is having a chicken dinner. Um, all after, uh, after church tomorrow. So decide whether you want spaghetti or chicken and help out our sister congregations. All right. Um, oh, the, uh, there is a note in the bulletin for uh, Easter lilies. Um, anyone who would like to donate Easter lilies this year, here's your, uh, your order form. Uh, please have this form turned in by Palm Sunday, uh, the 24th, so that the, uh, the, so that the Easter lilies can be uh, purchased uh, and, uh, and set up prior to the, uh, to the Easter morning services. Oh, um, the, uh, the two flower arrangements uh, that you see in front of the lectern and in front of the pulpit uh, given by the, uh, the Mason Kinney family uh, his funeral was uh, earlier today, so please do uh, remember the Kinneys uh, in your prayers and with your uh, well wishes and uh, an ongoing support uh, in their time of grief. Have a good week. <laughs>